Hey guys, I have some breaking news for you. And this is very, very, very big breaking news. It happened a little while ago, but I wanted to wait a little bit so I can get you some better details on it. But Juan Soto has rejected a 15-year, $440 million offer from the Nationals, which would have been the record, the biggest contract ever in the history of baseball in terms of overall value, overall total dollars, not years. It, it comes out to $29.33 million, .3 million a year over 15 years. It did not have any deferred money either, which is unusual. The Nationals tend to defer money like they did with Max Scherzer. Turned his, essentially his seven-year 210 uh, deal into a 14-year 210 deal uh, and just spread out a little bit differently. So, um, <clears throat> But with that said, I think there are a couple reasons why he didn't you know, accept it. Number one, well, probably doesn't want to stay long-term with the Nationals. At this point, I don't think they're going to wind up with another Max Scherzer or a prime-time Steven Strasburg or whatnot. Their window to win a championship is, I think, has closed, and he, I think he knows that he's won a championship with them. And it's time to cash in, obviously. His age and the situation, he's going to capitalize, and there's maybe there's less than a handful of teams that can offer him what he wants and offer the team what they want. The other uh, I think reason is there was no opt-outs. No opt-outs in this kind of 15-year consecutive deal, $29.33 million per year without a single opt-out in it. So I think that's another reason. If I'm Brian Cashman, I'm making a huge offer, I'll put an opt-out in it after six years or seven years, let him opt out at 29 or 30. And then you let him walk after you just get six or seven prime years. Let somebody else pay for the decline years. And you just you just got to steal, an absolute steal, if that happens. Now, Cashman, uh, please, I hope, you're, I hope you're on the phone with him already. And this is the, if you're ever going to go for something, you go for this one. So he's now available. The Nationals have officially made him available in trades until the trade deadline. So we have about a little over two weeks to make something happen, and it's it's very possible. And uh, <laughs> again, I wouldn't wait. And keep in mind, acquiring Juan Soto just to say in an in off you know fantasy land the Yankees acquire him that does not solve the pitching problem. You know, it doesn't solve the starting pitching or the relief pitch. They still have to address that too. But this guy is way better than anybody else that's available by 50 miles, and he's younger and he's got controllable years. So my guess is that, you know, it, you, it would have to come with an extension. It would be kind of foolish to not give him an extension and trade a boatload of capital. So let's just say off the top of, you, you, top of my head, you're doing a, you do a 14-year deal for $37 million per year, which makes him the highest paid position player ever. Okay? So let's just say 14 years for $37 million per year. Let's do some calculations here, okay? Um to put it in perspective, which will be a freaking monster contract. Okay, the biggest one's currently what? 13 years, 425, I think it is. Mike Trout, right? Uh, so let's just say 37 times 14, $518 million. Ridiculous. And you give him an opt out after seven years, halfway through. And if he's still playing really well, do you think he's going to, you think he's not going to opt out? He'll opt out. Okay, so you'd be giving him what two years to uh, 259 million, seven years, 259 million dollars, which is essentially about the about the contract that folks want judged to sign, seven years, 259 million dollars. So, just to put that in perspective, and uh, it is it's it's doable, and again. This is going to require a Herculean package, Herculean effort. So it's, you be prepared to say goodbye to Volpe and Dominguez and Peraza and probably Waldachuk and, and a bunch of others. It's There's no way we're going to get them without it. And keep in mind, the Dodgers, who can pr present the biggest package for Luis Castillo, can do the same for Juan Soto. They have now they can now choose between Soto and, and Luis Castillo. But the Dodgers, I think, Soto represents less of a need positionally for them than he does the Yankees. So it would be wise for the Yankees to offer their biggest package now. And and if they say no, then you, you pivot and you do what you gotta do. And uh, and again, this is this is the this is the time now. This is the opportunity. He is now officially available. And I think there's probably three teams, maybe the Dodgers, the Mets, and the Yankees, who have the, the capacity and the balls to go get him and pay his contract. In free agency, I would add the Texas Rangers to that list in terms of free agency. They might offer him some stupid, ridiculous contract too. Just like they've been doing recently, and I think they're going to continue adding to Seager and Simeon and the rest of them. But he's not going to be free agent until you know the end of 2024 anyway. So be wise. Go get this man now, now, now.
What do you guys think of this? Please subscribe to this channel because if there's any other news that pops out in, in, in Yankee world, you're going to get it here, especially if it's New York Yankees and Juan Soto news. You're not going to want to miss that because I'm going to put that out immediately. Could you imagine if this news breaks when I'm like live at the deadline or, or like just breaks today for some reason that the Yankees just come out of nowhere and Cashman does some Houdini thing? I can't even begin to. I can't even begin to imagine. Now I don't want to get. Oh, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But the, the but the possibilities are very exciting. Now that he's officially available, and the Yankees represent the small amount of teams who can actually pull it off. Now with the pitching thing, I do not recommend adding Patrick Corbin or Steven Strasburg to a multiplayer trade. There's, I, there's no way I'm going to assume their money just to get Juan Soto. If they demand that, I would say I would just pass on Juan Soto. That's what I would do. Kind of ballsy, but I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I would keep going after. I mean, Luis Castillo is the guy. But if you're going to give up, you know, a haul for somebody, it's got to be Juan Soto at this point. And you get pitching. Just get pitching one way or another. And see if you can get a high end reliever, which will cost less than a high end starter at that point. And you just get a, another starter one way or another. There's the ways you can do this. But Juan Soto is now the number one target. Will the Yankees go get him? Let's talk about it.